Hey everybody, Guy from Ajax here. Welcome to the Daily 5 and 9, where I try to win 5 Splinterlands matches before I lose 5. And I record the matches in real time so you can hear my stream of consciousness thinking while I set my strategy. Web3 strategy games like Splinterlands are the best and gamers need more of them to choose from. That's why I'm developing a Web3 basketball strategy game called Geeked Out Basketball. Links are in the description below. Now, let's get rolling on today's matches. All right. The start of a new season has put my goal of a plus 500 November into jeopardy. These first few days are just difficult. Uh, currently sitting at 6 and 8. Ooh, that's loud. Let's turn that down a little. Okay, 54 mana. <clears throat> Aim true and spreading fury. So all monsters are going to have enrage. Uh, what do I want to do here? This, with this rule set, feels like a water. Water. Let's get that demon shark. People to get enraged. And let's get the healer in there. Uh, the Medali Guardian to keep him alive. <clears throat> I probably want to figure out what aim true monsters I can use to take advantage of this, but I definitely want the Deep Lurker. Let's look at some of these high mana. Yeah, the, the Rune Mancer Kai. Uh, I think Nerissa, or maybe some of these Rift Watcher archers make sense. <clears throat> and I guess I only have one. Archer. Now two, I guess. Coastal Nymph and the Sea Stalker. Don't think I'm going to go Wave Brood here. We'll go Nerissa. And then, do I want the Stalker or the Nymph? So the Nymph has... The Stalker has better uh, offense, but not as much health. Hmm, decisions here. What do I want to do? We're going to go with the Sea Stalker. And then... How do I want this lineup to play out? I think I'm going to go Rune Mancer Kai in the second position. I think we'll go Narissa here. And the Guardian. Does it make sense to have the Guardian? Yeah, I think I want the Guardian trying to heal all four of these as they go into the tank position. All right. I don't know why it keeps setting my game. I don't, I don't play with game sound effects. I don't know. Every time I come back, it's been setting them. I must have a cookie issue. All right. Okay, hey, they didn't max out their mana. I mean, they had the Wavesmith and the Coastal Nymph in there. Uh, this is interesting. Oh, I think they want to get the positive effects off of my Demon Shark with the Coastal Nymph. See if that pays off. Smart strategically, but I don't know if it undermines the... Um, just the, you know, the, the quality of their, their monsters. And, you know, with all that mana they're leaving on the table. I guess we'll see. <clears throat> Okay, great. Got their Deep Lurker out of there. And got their Coastal Nymph out of there. I wanted to get the Gen O'Shaughness eliminated. They got my Rune Mancer. They eliminated my Rune Mancer. It's looking good. <clears throat> Can't imagine I'm going to lose this one. No, oh, their Nerissa is just going to get taken down. Great. 1-0 to start the day. <clears throat> I have a death focus. I really don't pay attention to the focus probably as much as I should. For me, I'm more about trying to get up into the Diamond League than winning daily rewards. Okay, there is no... No shield and 56 mana. This may ironically be a death play after I was just talking about never using them. See how it's looking. So if I do it, I'm thinking Curse Windaku because he doesn't have shield anyway. And the Damn Fear Stalker and Lyra because their range is going to go right at the opponents. Uh, I do like Queen of Crows with this rule set. A couple just high health monsters sitting up front. And then what else do I want to roll with? I mean, do I want to play the Junker? He just seems so underwhelming at times. I do have a level 4 Junker, though. Might as well give it a shot. And then <clears throat> I'm thinking maybe Supply Runner just to speed up this unit a bit more. Then we'll go the Damn Fear Stalker here. And I think we'll order them this way. Let's see. A bit of an unconventional lineup. I usually don't play this type of lineup. Okay, good. I'm going to have my Thaddeus is going to negate their, their buff, their Obsidian buff. I guess the question is, can I eliminate Grun before he gets some major attacks on the Windaku? My higher speed... No, I'm not going to because they have the Slip Spawn in there. 
Okay, goodbye, Windicoo. Yep. Okay. And they're healing their Grund. Okay, we got the we eliminated the Goblin Psychic. It's gonna be close. Can my Queen of Crows hang in there and keep my archery monsters in the back row to attack? It looks like she's doing her job. She had high enough mana to start. Now it's just the Rune Mancer. And look at that. Feeling good about this? Yes, great. 2-0. Can I get that inevitable 5-0 day for the first time this early into a season? I'd be surprised. That win felt good though. My death unit coming out. It's um it's been middling. You see this next time I publish a stats video. I'm kind of starting to middle towards 500 with the death unit, which was always an overperforming unit for me. Okay, 34 mana uh, target practice, so the snipe, and then uh, no healing. So what do I want to do here? Yeah, I might lean into Obsidian. Let her do her thing, plus up this magic. Probably won't use the Goblin Psychic, but I have some other mo monsters I can use. Um, yeah, might as well just, it might be a little recency bias coming into play. You know what, I'm going to go with the 11 Defender um, and just let him do his job while my offensive magic monsters can sit back here and do their thing. Just let him, just let that tank tank. Uh, what do I want? The Magi Chaos. And there's room for the Slip Spawn, which is great. And we're gonna have the Fiend in the Reach position. And then for two, do I wanna go with one of the Archery Monsters or Chimera Princess, even though she's not healing? She'll have a two magic damage or you know, I'm going to go Acid Shooter just in case my opponent is um, has some sort of magic nerf in there. It doesn't look like my opponent will, but you never know. I mean, death isn't on the table. so uh, And I think this order is working. Okay. Yeah, just to, yeah, I don't know. Sometimes I like to not lean all the way into one form of offense even with I, when I have obsidian buffing everything. Looks like my opponent is really putting some thought into this lineup. It's interesting. If you watch my stats videos, <clears throat> the Earth Splinter also is a high performing splinter for me. And a little spoiler alert before my next stats video, that's starting to middle towards 500 as well, too. I think I've been leaning into it a little too aggressively uh, because it was performing so well. And um, it's taking more losses than normal. You know, the Periton and the Goblin Psychic and the Khmer Princess. Uh, all three of those monsters, they tend to they tend to win more matches than they lose when I play with them. Uh, same for Unicorn Mustang. I don't use the Unicorn Mustang as much as those other three magic monsters, though. Come on, do I need to refresh? Watching that, yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, my guy. Okay, three zero. It's a it's a forfeit, but I'll take it. Points are points. It's weird. I kind of don't want my first 5-0 and o day to be with a forfeit, but whatever. I'll take it. I just need a 5-0 and o day. I've had such a difficult start to this season. Okay, Magic Reflect. 18 mana. Um, what do I want to play? Should I try a low mana Tarsa lineup centered around melee? That would mean Serpentine Spy, Uraeus... Probably Antoid Platoon into the tank position. What I might even do is put the Scorch Fiend in here. Uh, and then is there another three mana monster I want to use or do I want to go four with the Scavo Firebolt? Or what I could do is go with that strategy of letting the Exploding Rats get one hit in the front spot. And then Antoid Platoon gets to scavenge its death. I think that's what I'm going to do. And the Scorch Fiend's here to protect the Serpentine Spy. If my opponent has an opportunity monster. Yeah, let's roll with this. 
let's see if Tarsa and her her low mana monsters can get me my a four and oh, give me the four and oh today. Hmm. Well, the Tide Biter is not going to get affected by Exploding Rat's Blast. So that's a bummer. And my, my Exploding Rat didn't even get to, get to execute a hit. I think that this strategy is going to prove to be ineffective. Yeah, we had we poisoned their bandit, but I don't think it's going to it's going to result in anything. Yep, look at that. They got a double hit. My serpentine spy is going to get demolished. Dang. All right, three one. Got a little maybe. Yeah, I wouldn't say I got too fancy there. I just tried a strategy and it was ineffective against the demon shark. Okay, lost legendaries, no abilities, 17 mana. Let's go with a ranged attack here with a strong tank. Uh, who constitutes a strong tank? I mean, Chaos Knight, that only leaves me with 7 mana. I think I'll try Blinding Reflector, and Fiend's not going to be available. I can put one of, one of the 1 mana monsters in there to be a warm body. Uh, and let's see what sort of... Sort of a... Uh, melee I can build out here uh, I could go portal spinner he's a bit slow um, I could go Zenith and then do I want to go Dax just to mix it up or is there a seven I don't think there's a seven mana archery available there is a six I could get rid of that one mana monster I could go Supply Runner, plus him up. None, and then it would be Dax. I don't know if I need that. You know what, maybe it's a five and a three. Maybe it's Portal Spinner. And there really aren't any compelling three monsters in this rule set. I think it's Dax and one of the six mana archers, which has to be Supply Runner, right? I think that's who I have to go with. Or it could be a four and a four, which would be Crystal Smith and Time Mage. Essentially, do I want to go Supply Runner and Dax or Crystal Smith and Time Mage? Um, you know, I'm, I just think there's a bit better offense with these two four mana monsters that I'm going to lean into. So let's try it. I hate not having the benefits of Crystal Smith and Time Mage because their 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 special abilities are so awesome, but yeah, so be it. Uh, Time Mage is going to get hit by the Magic Reflect. Oh no, I'm sorry, there's no Magic Reflect here. Okay, this is just no abilities. Yeah, great, eliminated their tank. My tank is gone. Crystal or Time Mage, hang in there. Yeah, I, I was a little too archery heavy with this one. Dang it. 3-2. Okay. All that deliberation for a pretty pretty underwhelming performance. Alright, let's see who the Splinterlands gods are going to match me with this time. 25 mana and again no abilities let's go water this time because they have some strong magic monsters uh, let's let the cruel cethropod just even though it's been giving me terrible stats i'm going to do a little feature on my least my my worst performing cards at some point but i think narissa gets a roll with this lineup i think magi of chaos gets a roll Obviously, the Torrent Fiend is going to be in here. And for three mana, I think it's the Angelic Mandarin, right? I think that's the play. Is there any way I could go with a five mana monster and roll with the Kulu Swim Hunter? There just aren't many. I mean, the Wavesmith without the shield is just not a very compelling monster. I think it's Angelic Mandarin uh, sitting back here. And I think this is the order I have to roll with. My opponent, also going Kelya. 
be interesting to see the with Rudston. So they're going Hardy Stonefish. They're going to rely on yeah Jin and they're just gonna they're setting up Jin and Narissa to just sit back there and pound us with magic. We'll see whose strategy is more effective. I'm clearly a bit faster. Neither one of us had super compelling tanks in the front. All right. This could be this. They're a great example of a nice focus lineup, you know, whereas my my ranged and magic wasn't wasn't meshing that well. Dang. All right, three three. Jin and Narissa nailed that one for him. <clears throat> okay, 18 mana. <clears throat> okay, uh, return fire and sneak a snipe. Great. Maybe that return fire will get me off these <clears throat> archery monsters today. So no sneak and snipe. Let's go death. <clears throat> Excuse me. Goodness gracious. Uh, let's go curse Windaku. I think I'm going to go with the bone smith. I just want to go bone smith and life sapper, and let these uh, let these you know or the soul. No, I'm not gonna go soul, soul strangler. Not with this. Um, we'll go corpse fiend. That leaves me with a one, which my gut's telling me Chaos Asian just to let these two magic monsters sit back here and do their thing. Um, I guess the question is, is there a seven mana tank that I would consider in lieu of Cursed Windaku? I don't think so. My other strategy would be to let these two sit here and put the Dampier Stalker back there, remove the Windaku, and or sorry, let the Corpse Fiend, but no, that's not the way to go. I think this is it. Yeah, let's do it. Hopefully the Bonesmith can poison some of their some of their monsters. I like that they're going Tarsa with melee, which means they should be getting formed out by by um the Windaku. Okay, Grum's going to get some thorns after delivering a pretty hearty five damage. And they got the Repair Monkey back there. I always forget that monster's name. I call it, yeah, the Flame Monkey. I always call him the Repair Monkey. Because that's obviously what sticks out about him when you see him in a, when you're playing against him. All right, there was a Bloodlust. A good Chaos Agent. Can you keep doing your thing? Dang. I I think, though, the poison should get Grum here. Okay. Great. Got it. Yep. All right. 4-3. I had to sweat that one. Grum hit a bloodlust. Or two, actually. And was still able to beat him. Equalizer, 18 mana. Everything except death on the board. Here, I feel like I just need to get six monsters out there with this low mana count. And get them all plussed up, which means life means Soul Fiend. Let's go the Harpy. Let's go with the Stitch Leech and the Uraeus. That still has, leaves me with 7 mana, which I like. Maybe it's the Crystal Smith to get some healing. And who would be a good 3 mana monster? I mean, it could be Blinding Reflector. It could be Spirit Hoarder. Uh, I think it's going to be Blinding Reflector. So two tanks, I guess the question is, am I getting enough offense from these four? And hopefully there's not a killer sneak monster in the lineup that eliminates my Crystal Smith. But, you know, you can't account for everything. Okay, they're leaning into archery, looks like, with General Sloan. Yep, yeah, okay. I guess it's how long can the Blinding Reflector and Soul Fiend last with, this range, with these ranged attacks coming at them. Okay. Get a little healing in there. I'm going to have double sneak. Can we eliminate? Great. Sometimes the Stitch Leech doesn't always hit its attacks. But we got the we eliminated the Arbalest, which was pretty important. All right, now my offense is into the tank position with Uraeus. But still, it's looking pretty good. Great. All right, a 5-3 day today. Kind of a, kind of a rewarding victory. Um, needed it so great so uh, yeah if you guys have watched the uh, 
video this far and you enjoy the content, uh, feel free to, to like and uh, subscribe. That would really help me out quite a bit. And um, yeah, have a great day. I look forward to sharing another video with you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.